And number 12, the prerogative to dismiss employees. The employer still retains its uh, inherent right to discipline employees. Disciplinary penalties usually take the form of warning, reprimand, suspension, demotion, or dismissal from service. The disciplinary prerogative of an employer cannot be nullified by arguing that the employer is the accuser, prosecutor, and judge at the same time. Limiting this employer right is a right granted to employees, specifically the right to security of tenure. Security of tenure simply means that the employer cannot dismiss an employee without just cause or authorized cause. As to what type of disciplinary action should be imposed will depend upon the surrounding circumstances of each case. Surely, dismissal would be appropriate for serious offenses or those falling under the just causes for dismissal enumerated in the law. Regarding offenses that do not clearly fall under any of the just causes for dismissal, certain factors must be considered, such as Number one, nature of the offense. Number two, position of the employee. Number three, degree of damage to the employer. Number four, past record of the employee. And number five, length of service. Nature of the offense. Serious offenses necessarily deserve the supreme penalty of dismissal. On the other hand, Offenses that are not so serious would merely warrant a penalty lower than dismissal. Position of the employee. Managerial employees, supervisors, and other employees occupying positions of trust and confidence are subject to a stricter norm of discipline than rank and file workers. They may be dismissed by the mere existence of a basis for believing that said employees have breached the trust of their employer. However, when it comes to rank and file workers, proof of involvement is needed. Mere uncorroborated assertions and accusations by the employer will not suffice. Degree of damage. In some cases, the degree of damage suffered by the employer may be considered in imposing the proper penalty. Where the offense has not caused serious damage to the employer, dismissal may be too harsh a penalty. It must be understood, however, that in some offenses, damage is not a deter determining factor. For example, if the employee has been grossly and habitually neglectful of his duties, he can be dismissed, uh, dismissed regardless of whether the employee or employer rather has sustained damages or not. Oops. Past records of the employee. Disciplinary actions are primarily intended to correct the employee's behavior and attitude towards his work. If previous disciplinary actions do not reform the employee because he continues to commit similar offenses, it is but appropriate to impose a harsher penalty for the present offense. Length of service of the employee. The longer an employee stays in the service, the greater is his responsibility for knowledge and compliance with the norms of conduct and code of discipline of the employer. The long years of service of an employee should, therefore, be taken against him. Otherwise, it will become a prize for disloyalty, thereby perverting the meaning of social justice and undermining the efforts of labor to cleanse its ranks of all undesirables. <clears throat> Overall consideration. All the foregoing factors, length of service, past record of the employee, degree of damage inflicted, or possession held by the employee will be overshadowed by the seriousness of the offense. The law warrants the dismissal 
of an employee without making any distinction between a first offender and a habitual delinquent, where the totality of the evidence is sufficient to warrant dismissal. Now, to reiterate a portion of the discussion a few moments ago, the power to dismiss an employee is a recognized prerogative that is inherent in the employer's right to freely manage and regulate his business. Such right, however, is subject to regulation by the state, basically in the exercise of its paramount police power. Thus, the dismissal of employees must uh, be made within the parameters of the law and pursuant to the basic tenets of equity, justice, and fair play. It must not be done arbitrarily and without just cause.